Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to today's video. So I'm, today we're going to be go ahead and uh, we're going to be knocking out the heater core. All right, so first process step in getting the heater core out, you're going to need to get your dash pulled away from the front. Um, I did this last video. If you want my honest opinion, don't even bother watching that. Go watch LMC Trucks uh, second gen dash pull video. That's what I followed and it's very detailed. It shows you exactly everything you need to do to get your dash to this point. Um, mine is not all the way out because there's some cables and stuff hung up over there. So I figured this is good enough. My ultimate goal here is to do the dash top because obviously it's all cracked. I'm waiting on a new um, actuator thingy for the for the AC to work properly. And I'm also doing a blower motor. But today we're focused on the heater core right here. So as you can see, this is your heater core right here. Um, looks like it's held in by two screws and there's a random ground right there. Not sure what that's about, but it is what it is. So this side's pretty easy. And pretty much all we're going to do is undo the two screws and then the new style heater cores, which I'll pull out of the box in a second to show you, actually have rotating arms and it makes it a million times easier to get these things in and out. So we're going to wind up cutting ours and then the new one will be, we'll pull out the, uh, the pipes in two separate pieces. On the front side, and for those of you not aware, this is my 2001 Dodge Ram. So on the front side, these are your heater core pipes right here. And... They go right there. So the way I'm going to get those out is I have some long, uh, long nose pliers. I'm going to go ahead and try and figure out where these little clamps are on that back side back there. And then pop them off. Although I may decide to pull them off from here. And then this way I have something to pull on those pipes to get them out of there. But we'll see. I think I'm going to try and get the ones in the back. So this first step is going to do that. So whatever fluids there is going to drain. Then I'm going to just prop these straight up so it doesn't drain my entire cooling system. They're actually pretty high, so I doubt it would anyway, but whatever, that's not the point. So that's step one. We're going to go ahead and get something to get these out, and uh, let me show you the new heater core real quick. Right, so this is a new heater core, and as you can see, these actually rotate, um, which is going to make life much easier to get this new thing in here. But yep, so all we're literally doing is just replacing that in there. And the reason you do this is Dodges are known to have some heater core problems. I'm pretty sure that's still the original one. Doesn't look like any of the stuff's been pulled out before. And I did notice a little bit of water on the floor when I bought it. I don't know if it's from the heater core or if maybe the AC was just having some condenser leak. I really don't know. But I figure if I'm going to pull it apart this far, I might as well knock that out. So that's the plan. All right, so step one, if you're doing this, you're going to need a pair of long pliers. Because these are the only way I was able to reach those all the way back there. But what we're going to go ahead and do is pull them off real quick. It's going to leak a little bit of stuff, but whatever. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set them in a position that will face up. This way they're not in the way. And it doesn't leak any more fluid than it has to. All right, so I went ahead and popped them off. As you can see, they're just hanging out. That's where your heater core is, right in there. I'm actually pretty sure this coolant system only has water in it, which is kind of crappy. So I'm going to need to flush it out and put some actual coolant back in here because... Florida's probably not so bad, but if you take it to, like, anywhere that freezes, you're going to break a radiator and other stuff because water expands way more than coolant does. So I went ahead and removed this top bracket right here. I just have that one right there. Check this out. Way to go, Dodge, because if you can tell, screwdriver doesn't fit straight up and down, so I'm trying to finagle this screw out very slowly. Super irritating. Small stuff like this is why these projects take way longer than they're supposed to. All right, so as you can see, the new one right here has rotating feet. And that is so, I guess, pipes. That's so you can get it into this very tight spot right here. So I've seen two ways people do this. Uh, first one is they'll actually cut them right here or here or anywhere and use a rubber hose as a, uh, as a mating piece with two hose clamps. So if I can't get these things in properly, that's what I'm going to do. But what I'm going to try and do first, I'm going to cut these right here. This way I can pull this out and I can finagle those out. Alrighty, so I went ahead and sliced them. As you can see, pretty easy. Now we're going to go ahead and pop this guy allegedly straight up and out. I'm going to have to work this a little bit. Yeah, no, it'll come. I just need to get two hands on it. And the reason I wanted to disconnect the pipes first is because in case any of this metal shavings goes back into the uh, coolant system, you want to prevent that. But I'm like, this is 100% water. Alrighty, so went ahead and popped the new one in. Uh, definitely takes a solid amount of muscling. I'm fairly confident I put a... I bent this pipe. I don't think I broke anything. It's just, holy crap. That is a tight fit. So I definitely understand people are coming from this thing sucks. Uh, trick is to get these things started first uh, at a really sharp angle. And then you just work and push and work and push and work and push some more until it eventually pops into place. 
Man, that sucked. So, hopefully when I put this back together, I don't have a massive coolant leak. That would suck. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these back together. I think it's actually going to slide down a little more. Let me go ahead and see if I can get this down real quick. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, guys, there we go. Just installed. So I'm going to replace the brackets, put the ground back, and uh, that's pretty much it for the heater core. Well, they're all hooked back up, as you can see. No issues. Um, only one way to find out if we're going to have any problems, that's when we turn it on eventually. So, I'm still waiting on parts for the inside which is why the truck's not back together yet, obviously. So, as you can see, I think uh, probably going to knock out, I don't know. I have the blower motor to put on, but it's honestly easier to do with the dash back up because I can reach under it that way. Uh, probably going to put the new dash on next, I think. All right, well, this is going to be a teaser because it turns out this thing actually does cut off way more space than I thought because I need to get back in there to do stuff later. So... But check this thing out, guys. Doesn't this look a million times better with this thing on here? So that's what it's going to look like once it's all put together. However, for right now, i got to take it back off because I actually can't get back to where I need to for when that other part comes in. All right, I took it back off, so that's a little depressing. But now you guys at least have an idea of what it's going to look like once it's uh, mostly back together. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. So as you can see, pretty much just did the heater core. Nothing else crazy going on right now. Pretty much waiting on that stupid uh, little HVAC piece to come in. Once that comes in, we'll go ahead and put everything else back together. So, I'll see you next one.